are recording. My name is Liz and I am excited to hang out here today and talk about everything to do with art. We are going to start with the first lesson today about lines. Lines are the most simple, basic part of art and I'm really excited to talk about a whole bunch of different ways artists have incorporated lines in their artwork and where we can see lines in nature and give you some cool ideas for some projects to do along the way. So let's get started. You can see behind me I have a picture hanging up that has some pictures of where you can see lines used in nature. I guess not used in nature, but where they can be found in nature. So you've got a zebra up here, and over here we can see some lightning. Back down here there's a canyon wall that's got some lines that have been made through wind and water through the ages. I'm going to show you a couple other examples that I've got right here. So I just snuck into my girl's bedroom and I stole a couple of seashells that they had. You can see really easily some lines you can find in nature right here along the seashell. Another thing found in the ocean is a sand dollar where you can see, and this one's a really sandy sand dollar still. You can see the lines on it, and then if you flip it over to the back, this is really cool. I love the lines that you can see. It almost looks like it's been hit by lightning, and the lightning went and kind of the electricity shot out everywhere. So that's like a cool way you can see lines in nature. One of my favorite things to draw is kind of weird, but bugs have the most cool lines and the most cool shapes on them, especially on their wings. This is a digital image of a bug's wing, but you can kind of see all of the really cool lines that are inside of these wings and the cool lines that are inside these eyeballs. Now in the background you can see a poster that I've got with some bugs and some bug wings on them. Bugs are always so fun to draw, and butterflies with their wings are so cool. Dragonflies have really awesome wings as well. So do grasshoppers. So if you want to check out bugs' wings, they have really great lines and are so fun to draw. Of course, there's zebras. They're so awesome. Lots of cool lines there. The inside of a tree, all of those tree rings inside the stump of a tree. Lines in nature, super cool. Now this is an advertisement that I cut out of a magazine a long time ago. But the wind can make lines inside of the sand in deserts or here in the snow. So it's a commercial, but if I cover that up, it's a pretty cool picture of lines in nature. And then I've got this picture right here that I want to show you. This is a photograph that I cut out of a magazine years and years ago, and I really loved this. This is um, some lines taken. There are actually, there are lights moving, and everywhere that the lights moved, it created lines on the sand dune at night. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, some artists have loved lines so much that all of their artwork is just lines. They love lines. They've seen the lines in nature and they love them so much that their artwork are just lines. Now I've got some pictures of some artwork back here that you can look at and you can see while I'm talking. I really love this picture back here. The guy's in pain and he's, oh, he's in so much pain. And from where you're seeing it from the camera, it looks just kind of like a colored picture, but if you can see it up close, it's all scribbled lines. Now some artists instead of turning their lines into a picture, just want to focus on the lines themselves because they line, love lines so much. So one of the most famous artists who loves lines, his name was Jackson Pollock, and he painted giant, giant paintings where he would just flick paint to make these paint splatter lines. He loved these paint splatter lines so much. And you can see, here's a picture of him, you can see how big his artworks actually were. Here's another picture of him. This was taken from up above, and he's standing down here. He's actually standing on top of one of his paintings, flicking the paint. His paintings were that big. And like he said, he just loved those lines. You can see that they're kind of crazy, kind of chaotic, his pictures, of all these lines on top of each other and moving around. His paintings, he used a whole bunch of different kinds of paint, and he worked a long time ago and because he used all these different kinds of paint sadly some of his paint 
His paintings are starting to fall apart and disintegrate. But they're really cool. I'm glad we have lots of prints of them so we can see all of the chaos of all of these lines going on top of each other. So his paintings, he loved the chaos and he loved the lines. It kind of gives you like a frantic feeling when you look at it because you see all these lines going everywhere and you're trying to wonder is there a picture in there that I'm supposed to see and it gives you kind of a chaotic feeling. Now I'm going to show you a completely different kind of artwork from a different group of people that worked pretty close to the same time period that Jackson Pollock worked. These artists were called op artists and op is short for optical illusions. They loved lines so much but they loved lines in a different way. They loved all their lines to be straight and perfect and in order. This one kind of tries to make you see it's, it's dark and then it's light and then there's light added into the darkness. This one I love is just colored stripes. They just loved the straight, the lines. They just loved that. Now some of the artists liked, they took the, the lines and the symmetry and the order and the structure of lines and then they tweaked it just a little bit to try to play a trick on your eyes. So this artist is named Bridget Riley and it's kind of going to wig the camera out a little bit. So she liked to make these kind of artworks and the lines are all right next to each other right in order but they just curve enough that when you look at them it makes them look like they're moving like they're waves. This is called op art, and it's short for optical illusion. And it has a very different feel. This has a different feel from this, even though they're both symmetrical and just using lines. But it has a very different feeling, again, than the chaos that this has. So lines can create different feelings inside of you as well. So we're going to look at some student examples of op art. So here's some different student examples of how to make op art. With just the lines, or to make lines that look like they're moving, moving across the page, getting bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, like ebbing and flowing as they move. They're really fun, and eventually I might do a whole video on how to do op art, because I love op art. It's really fun, it's really therapeutic, kind of a good stress reliever when you're having a bad day to just sit and make something that's perfect and orderly and you can listen to your favorite music or a book on tape and I love to make op art. Now I'm going to show you a fun op art project that I like to do, that my girls like to do, um, and I think I'm going to show you from the beginning to the end instead of showing you the end product first. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a product, a project that's more like Bridget Riley. We're going to do symmetrical lines, but we're going to try to fool your eye to make like our lines are moving. So we're going to do a kind of a Bridget Riley inspired op art product, project. All you need for this is a piece of paper and a pencil. It would be really cool if you had a Sharpie or a pen, but you don't need one as long as you have a pencil and a paper. You could even use a crayon if that's all that you have. So this is just a piece of paper from the printer, and I am going to take that piece of paper, and I am going to trace my hand right on the piece of paper. I've got my pencil, and I'm going to lay my hand right on the paper, and I'm even going to trace my wrist. I'm just going to trace my hand, and I think I'm going to do it with a Sharpie, even though I showed you a pencil. I think I'm going to do it with a Sharpie, just so it's easier for you guys to see. Now, if I was doing this at home for real, I would start with a pencil first because I always start with a pencil first. But for today, just for what we're doing when we're watching each other, I'm just going to use a Sharpie so you can see my lines better. So I've got my hand. I'm going to just place it flat on my paper. And I'm going to even I'm gonna take off my watch really quick because I don't want to have like a weird bump on my arm. Okay. Move my bracelets up. Okay, now my hand's ready to go. I'm going to lay it right here in the middle of my paper, and I'm going to trace. Now, I have a scratch piece of paper underneath me because I am using a Sharpie. Sharpies sometimes bleed through things or get on the table, and if 
you're a kid and you're using a Sharpie and you bleed through onto the table, sometimes your moms can get cranky. So I always just use a scratch piece of paper underneath. Almost done, I'm just tracing around all my fingers, my thumb, coming around the bend, down my arm, and off the paper. Okay, so that's simple enough. I've got my hand. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a ruler. And I've just got like a silly ruler here today. It might not even be long enough. It's an ABC ruler. And I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to draw some lines across my paper. And if you don't have a ruler, something that you can always use in a pinch, if you don't have a ruler, is another piece of paper. In fact, I can even do that. So, if you don't have a ruler you can use, you can use another piece of paper, you can use a book, you can use a coloring book, anything that's got a straight line and you can use that. So I'm going to use my piece of paper and I'm going to make some straight lines here across the top of my paper. So I'm just going to make some lines, we're just going to make some straight lines, easy peasy, lemon squeezy along here, one line, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Now if you want to be super symmetrical, you want everything the same, you can measure and go down maybe a half an inch or every quarter of an inch. And we're just going to make these lines straight all the way across our papers. I'm going to do one more line and then I'm going to show you, uh-oh, I have a problem. And then you can see what my problem is and what I need to do. Okay, so I've got my straight lines going. And then I'll show you where my problem is. So I started making these straight lines all across my paper, but I started to run into my finger. So I started to run into my finger right here. Now I'm not going to draw a line right through my finger. Anywhere that's inside your hand, don't draw a line. Leave it blank for just a minute, and I'll show you what's going to happen next. So that was my problem. I ran into my finger. When you run into your finger, don't draw a line through it. Keep it blank. Keep it blank on the inside. I'm just going to make a couple more lines here to show you what's going to happen next. And lines, lines, and I did not go inside my fingers. Oh, now I'm down to where I'm going to be inside three different fingers, but I'm not going to draw a line inside them. I'm just going to go right around them. My Sharpie It's going to be so cool. I think I'm going to do two more lines really quick, and then I'll hold this up and show you what will happen next and how the, this is going to turn into an optical illusion project. So I'll draw one more line, over, 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 last one. Okay, now I'm going to hold this up so you can see. So you can see right now, I don't have anything inside here. What I need to do is I need to finish drawing lines all the way down my paper. All the way down. Once I have my lines all the way down my paper, now it's time for the optical illusion. So I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me draw all the lines. We'll pretend. We'll pretend I have all my lines drawn all the way down. But everything inside here is still blank. Now it's time to make the optical illusion. What you're going to do is you're going to connect the lines. I'll show you. So we're going to connect one line from here to here. But instead of making it straight, because our hands aren't flat, we want to make it curved so it looks like that there's a hand sticking out of our piece of paper. So we're going to make them curved. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm connecting. I'm going to connect this line right here whoop, to this line, this line to this line with a whoop. I'll show you. I'll show you what the whoop line looks like. Whoop. And whoop. See? So now all of a sudden our line's going along straight and then it looks like it bumps and then it goes straight. Now we're going to make it bump again, bump again, straight, and bump again. I'll show you really quick. We're going to make the bump. We're going to make the bump. We're going to make a bump. How cool is that? Oh, I missed a bump right here at the top. I missed a bump. 
There we go. We got the bumps in there. You're going to do that all the way down your page. When you're done, it's going to look like your hand is sticking right out of your page. How cool is that? And easy. Easy. Trace your hand. Draw some lines. Don't draw anything inside your hand. When, it, when you've got all the lines down your page, draw your bumpy lines all the way down. Easy peasy. And that way you've got a project using just lines, just like the op artist did, just like a Bridget Riley inspired artwork. All right. Now, not all artists. Oh, here's one. Here's a pencil one. If you just have pencil, that's cool too. Here's a pencil one in progress. So you can see the lines that went all the way down. And you can see how it works right here across where like the palm of your hand or the back of your hand is. Super easy. Super fun. Now, not all artists who use lines do only lines. No artists. Well, I shouldn't say that. I just showed you a bunch of artists that do just lines. But some artists use lines in different ways. So I'm going to show you some examples now of different ways lines have been used through the years. So, I live in Utah, and in Utah there are really great petroglyphs all around, like the Four Corners areas in southern Utah. And you can see that there are awesome line work. I love when we've gone and visited them. It's cool to see all of the awesome use of lines on the petroglyph. So here's one awesome example. Here's a really cool example of some petroglyphs and their use of lines. And I just love this. I love this one. Look at that. Look at the lines. Look at the lines on this guy. Super cool. Now some artists, they use the paint to create the lines with. Now this is probably one of the most famous paintings in the world. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but the paint itself is a bunch of lines. So this is painted by Vincent van Gogh and he used the lines to create this movement inside of his painting, his artwork, and it's all just lines. He liked to paint a lot with lines. Here's a self-portrait and look at all of those lines you can see. His artwork, his painting, is just all of these lines that he used to create a portrait of himself. That's pretty cool. One more, you can see the lines in his painting. Here's another artist that was working kind of roughly the same time he was. There's a painting of that, of this same picture, it's called The Scream, and there's also a lithograph. This is the lithograph, it's, it just shows the lines really, really well. Look at this, it's a whole picture and it's just these really cool lines. And it gives you kind of a creepy, scary, spooky feeling when you see this picture. At least it does for me. Here's another artist that was working about the same time. Now this picture I had hanging in my classroom for years. And I thought it was just a really cool picture of lines and shapes. So I'm going to let you look at it for a few minutes. It hung up on my wall for years. I even had it in a different classroom. And when I moved classrooms, I had it hanging up kind of by the clock. And one day I was looking at the time and I realized it wasn't just a cool picture of lines and shapes and colors. It's actually a person. There's their eyes. There's the nose. It's their hand. They're kind of resting their hand. It's from the side. Eyes, nose, hair. Very cool. So it's kind of like a stealthy picture. You don't really see it at first. But I thought that was a very cool way that this artist used lines. Now during roughly pretty close to the same time period of those artists that I just showed you was an artist named Paul Klee and he said a quote that people use all the time about art. And he said, a line is just taking a dot for a walk. That might not be the exact quote, but that's basically the idea of it as a line. It's just taking a dot for a walk. Now I wanted to show you one of his pictures, but the only picture I had was inside of one of my books. So I'm going to show it to you up close. And you can see that he obviously really liked lines. And his, his artwork looks a lot just like lines. But I love the idea of it. It's a line going for a, or a line is a dot going for a walk. That makes so much sense, like if you think about it. So I've got my big board right here. And we're going to, it's a, it's a dot and it just takes a walk. 
and whether it takes like a happy walk or an angry walk or like an excitable, confused walk, all it is is a dot going for a walk. And that was what makes a line. I thought that was like a cool way to think about what a line is. Now I'm going to show you one of my favorite projects to do. It's funny, it's weird, and I like what it looks like every single time I do it. So I'm going to show you a picture of it. Now this is a project you'll either like and think it's cool or you'll be like, whoa, that's weird. So here's an example of it. This is a self-portrait. This is a picture of me that I drew. These are called blind contour drawings. They're called blind contour drawings because you are going to be taking a dot for a walk and you are not going to be lifting your pencil up off of your paper. You're going to be drawing and it, your pencil's never going to come off of your paper. But it's called a blind contour because you don't get a look at your paper either. You can't look at your paper. You can only look at what you're drawing at. And the reason why I like them so much is because sometimes when we're drawing, we draw what we think we see instead of what we actually see. Here's another self-portrait. They look different every time. I'll show you a couple more examples of some blind contour drawings. Um, this is a picture of a student in my one of my classes. Love this one. This is one of my favorites. And here's a picture of my hand. And here's a blind contour drawing of Winnie the Pooh. So you will pick something that you look at and you are going to draw it without looking at your paper. If you look at your paper, that's cheating and it takes away the fun of it. So I'm going to show you how to do a blind contour drawing right now. And I'm going to use my big board. I've got my big board down here. And I'm going to use my marker. And I am just going to do a blind contour drawing of myself because I can see myself while I'm recording. So I'll just do a picture of myself and I'm not going to look at the board at all. Now these can take as long or as short as you want. But every time I do these in my classroom, I usually tell people this is a warm up to turn our art brain back on. Because sometimes our brain gets so, I don't know, sometimes our creativity gets turned off. Right now I'm drawing where my ear is. I think it's where my ear is, a big earring. This lets you look at exactly what you're doing, look at the, the subject, and not necessarily your paper. Sometimes we worry about making everything too perfect or making it exactly right. And that's the best part about art, is it doesn't ever have to be perfect. There's no right answer. That's why I like art better than math. Now math's cool and you need math, but I like art because there's no right answer. The answer is whatever you made, whatever you liked, whatever your message is you're trying to send, whatever color you think is cool, whatever shape that you like, that is what's great about art. All right, I think... I'm going to be done. Whoa. All right. So here is my blind contour drawing of myself. Dun, 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 dun. Doesn't it look just like me? <laughs> not really. And it doesn't have to. It's not supposed to. It's to get your mind in the right way to look at what you're really trying to draw and not worry so much about making everything be perfect. Blind contour drawings are one of my favorite things to do. I do them a lot. Especially right now. Right now I have to go to a lot of meetings online where I'm always looking at people's faces and looking at stuff. So I secretly sometimes during my meeting have my paper out and I'm listening and I'm watching the meeting. But underneath I've got blind contour drawings going of everybody that's inside the meeting. It's one of my favorite things to do. Blind contour drawings are always fun and I'm never sure what I'm going to get when I'm done. Now if you're at home and you don't have a camera that you're looking in, an easy way to do blind contour drawings is a lot of times um, your moms might have these at your house, little compacts that have mirrors in them. You can use the mirror. You can do it in your bathroom mirror if you want. Or you don't need to do your face. You can do your hand. You can do a shoe. You can do a annoying brother. You can do whatever you want. I even did. I had a little little figurine of Winnie the Pooh. You can do whatever you want as a blind contour drawing. Kind of gets your mind going and, 
and in the mood to just relax and do something that you love to do instead of worrying about making something that's going to look perfect. All right, we just took our dots on a walk and made a bunch of lines. Let's look again at some different ways the artists have used lines in artwork. And then I have one more cool project to show you. And then we'll be done for today. So I've got a couple more artists. I, I had a hard time choosing which artworks to pick because there are so many artists and artworks that I just love. This is a funny picture, but it is one of my favorite pictures. And not just because I love cheese, which I love cheese. It's not just because I love cheese. This artist is named Wayne Seibod. And I believe he's from Arizona, but look at the lines inside his paint. His paint was like so thick that it makes the brush itself makes lines right inside. Look at those lines of paint. That is some thick paint. It makes lines right inside what he's painting. I think I also like him because he paints food. I love food. He does lots of cakes and candies and you can see these lines. Look how thick they are. So cool. So that's how he uses lines in his artwork. This is another artist who I just think is so fun. This is Keith Haring. He uses lines a lot in his art. He kind of started by doing um, white chalk drawings on black areas in the subway around New York and he made these just really cool pictures but he has these thick lines that go around so much of his artwork and it's just cool and fun and happy and I love I love all of his artwork it's just so fun and I love this one it's got all the, the blackout lines and then there's lines inside some of the lines so fun such a fun artist now this artist he makes wire sculptures. So here's a picture of the artist and he's sitting in his studio making some sculptures and they are made out of wire. I think this is a drawing and this of a sculpture and then this is one of the actual sculptures. So he uses wire. He uses these pieces of lines to make his artwork. I think that's like super clever. He's using lines to create his artwork. Just those pieces of wire that he bends to make all of these really cool pictures. And so that's kind of how he creates his artwork. Using something that's just a line to create an artwork is the idea behind this. Now, I don't even remember what this is an advertisement for, but I cut it out of a magazine maybe 10, 15 years ago, and I thought it was so neat that they cut these strips of paper into lines and then bent those lines to make all of these different face shapes. So again, it's using lines, but using lines out of made out of something else. He used wire and he used paper and they made these cool shapes and cool pieces of art. Here's another artist. Now his last name's hard and I always say it's G.I.L. Cometti, but I'm probably saying his last name wrong. His artwork is so amazing and he does these tall, thin people, and they look just like stretched out lines. They're so cool to look at. Now this is a really cool picture. This kind of art's called an installation, and an installation's a little bit different than a statue or a painting. An installation is something that you can go sometimes and interact with. It has to do with the area that it's created in. So this has all of these lightning rods set out in a field and sure enough a lightning storm comes and the lightning hits the rods and they can take these beautiful pictures of this lightning storm. And that's pretty cool. And look at the lines that Mother Nature is making right there. Isn't that awesome? So cool. Kind of scary but super super cool. This artist is really fun. He does installations too and his name's Andy Goldsworthy. Look at this ice, this icicle. So he found the icicle and then he has slowly, slowly, slowly made it so that he's bent it and turned it and curved it and got it just attached to this tree. 
and it it's not a sculpture that's still there it can't stay there forever because it's just ice in this beautiful little part of this forest that he's made and look how he's used line to create this beautiful thing just out in nature pretty cool here's another artist and his work um, it's kind of getting harder and harder to see because he makes line shapes out of light tubes so all of his art is just light tubes and some of these light tubes they don't make anymore so they can't once the light goes out his artwork is 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 over with I think his name was Slavin Slavin is his last name he was pretty interesting to look up now Artists can also use lines to do different things with. So instead of just using the line to create the artwork, sometimes lines can do different things as well. So lines can do things to create movement. So to make things look like they're moving, like a person going from sitting to standing up, lines can do that. Or in cartoons, sometimes lines are drawn to show movement, like this guy dropping a ring into the hand that's put out some lines that are showing movement or in a flag the lines are moving and curling and twerving to show movement so some examples this line these lines right here this picture is so cool to me is showing that something is going really far back in the distance or maybe you're thinking that it's coming right at you so these lines the lines are being used to show something called perspective. And that's, that's the idea of things being farther away or closer up to you. So this artist used lines to make that perspective, to make this look like it's a side out that's going clear, clear out into the ocean, like up here. That's a very cool way to use lines. This artist, his last name is Bearden, and he would cut out pictures cut along the lines in magazines and photographs and newspapers and then these lines all will draw your eye throughout the picture. I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's, you can see what's pointing here and looking here and going down here and you're using the lines from what was cut out of the magazines to draw your eyes all around the picture so you don't miss any part of his artwork. This kind of art is called a collage, where you put a bunch of different things together onto a piece. Sometimes people call it mixed media. This is this is like a collage. He is a great one to check out. He's got a lot of really cool pictures. Here's another artist. Now he's using lines in a different way and to show distance. So instead of being a straight line, these ones are straight lines that are trying to show distance, things are getting farther away and then the ground is curved. Then he put some objects in a straight line or in a line and they keep getting smaller and closer together to make things look like they're farther away. Here's another use of lines. Now these lines, I like this picture because it's the same artist. His name's Grant Wood and I like this artist because or I like this picture because it does two different things. We've got the lines. Things are in straight lines going back, so it's showing things getting smaller by using lines. But look at these lines right here. These lines, the lines that he chose to use, everything looks so smooth and nice, but then you can tell that there has been a bad storm. Something scary, dark, and cold has happened. So he's using these lines, these jagged lines here, to make you feel something. Make you feel like, oh, this, is called, this painting's called January, so oh, all of this is dark and cold and, and we're getting ready for summer. Here's another artist. And it, this is a Cuban American artist. And I always say, I know I'm going to say his name wrong too. It's Azagata. And I know I'm saying his last name wrong as well. But I love this use of lines in this artwork right here. Again, this is using lines. It shows that it's water. You can tell that it's water, but it's also using lines to show feelings. So when you look at this picture, the colors and the lines and how tiny the people are inside the boat can give you the feeling of it's, it's scary and it's dangerous and it can give you like a scary, sad kind of a feeling just by the lines that are used. 
Now, I've shown you a bunch more artwork. I've shown you a bunch of different kinds of lines, lines that can make you feel happy, lines that can make you feel sad or worried. I'm going to show you a way that you can use lines to kind of help you with your own feelings. The kind of drawing that I'm going to show you next is called a Zentangle. Now, there's an official kind of Zentangle, but now the kind of drawings that I'm showing you are usually referred to as Zentangle, even though they're not official Zentangles. Um, what these are are pictures that you can draw a bunch of lines in. So here's one that I've worked on. So you can see I've got swirly lines, and I've got plaid lines, and I've got constellation lines, and there's no real right up or down. I've got lots of little circly lines. There's no up, there's no down, into whichever direction that you want. Here's one that one of my students has made. It's also a Zentangle. I really like her art style. Isn't that cool? Look at these ones where they're broken. I like this a lot. Some really cool, like, look at that. That's really cool. Just a bunch of different kind of lines. Here's another student artwork. So it was a picture, and they were putting lines inside of it. That's all a Zentangle is, is you take a piece of paper. So I'm going to take one right here. And I would recommend, if you're doing a Zentangle for the first time, that you take a piece of paper and maybe maybe just cut it in half. Just use a half a piece of paper so you don't get overwhelmed. So I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to fold it in half. I've got a blank piece of paper and I'm going to show you how to make an easy Zentangle. I'm going to take my piece of paper and I am just going to draw some lines on it. I think for this one I'm going to use my ABC ruler and I'll draw one line going this way, and I'm going to draw one line going this way, and another line coming down over here, and maybe one more down like this, and maybe one more over here like this, and maybe I need to draw a couple coming through over here. Easy peasy, I just drew some lines on a piece of paper. Now, everywhere that you've got a space, you can sit there quietly, again, you can be doing it while you watch TV, while you watch a movie, while you listen to your favorite music, while you're outside on the porch getting some sun. You can sit and just focus on drawing a bunch of different kinds of lines in here. Sometimes when you have a lot going on in your brain or you seem a little bit stressed out or you're worried, sometimes it's nice to sit down and just focus on something. And if you're feeling like you're in a bad or a scary mood, you can maybe draw some of like the scary lines and get those bad feelings out. Or if you're feeling happy or in a fun mood, maybe you're gonna have some kind of some swirls or some happy, some happy circles going on. You can sit and draw them. So you can do you can do a piece of paper like this and just draw some straight lines. Maybe you don't want to draw straight lines. Maybe you want to do something a little bit more silly. And you just want to draw some squiggly lines all over your page. You can see I already started to do some zen tangles inside here. That's all you do. Everywhere that you've got a blank space, just draw some different kinds of lines in there. Draw some different patterns. Whatever is making you feel happy, you draw those in. If you want to get crazy, you can draw stuff on the outside. So I did lines on, I drew, I drew me some clouds, and then on the outside I drew a bunch of kinds of lines. If that's how you want to do a zen tangle. You can draw a picture like this, something easy, and then in every part of the flower, maybe you want to draw your different kind of lines in each part of the flower in the center or on the leaf. Maybe you want to make a landscape. If so, draw some hills, draw some mountains, and then each one, maybe this one's got straight lines in it. Maybe this has the curvy lines in it. Maybe this has some jagged, scary lines. It's up to you, however you want to do it. If you want, another fun thing I like to do is sometimes I tear pages out of coloring books. And then inside those areas, I will make my Zen tangles. I'll draw my different kinds of lines and patterns inside there. Now earlier, I was showing you that you can just trace your hand to make this op art project. You can trace your hand a bunch of different times on a piece of paper. And look at that. All of these little areas you've got now to 
to make different kinds of line patterns in. Super easy. We can make a spider web. And you can do different kinds of line patterns inside there. Or, this is one. I have a daughter in elementary school, and this is one that she started to make. She made the lines herself. And then, instead of just doing black and white and using a pen, she wanted to use a crayon. And she wanted to do hers with different colors as well. That's a great idea, too. They're simple. They're easy to make. Kids like to do them. Adults like to do them. I love to do these sometimes. I told you in my meetings I'll do blind contour drawings. Sometimes I'll work on doing these as well. I've made quite a few of these over my meetings as well. It gives me something to quietly focus on and work on and come up with some really cool patterns and some things that I really like while I'm doing that. So I hope today you've got a bunch of different ideas. Maybe you saw some artwork that will give you an idea. Maybe you saw something from the pictures of nature that we looked like, what we looked at to give you some ideas of things to do. Maybe you'll want to try making your own variation of a Zen Tangle. Maybe you're going to want to try doing some op art, make this hand project. They're really fun to do, really easy. Or maybe you're going to want to try doing some of the blind contour drawings and make some cool pictures of yourself and your family or your dog or your cat. But give it, give it a try. All you need is a pencil and a piece of paper. If you are ambitious, maybe you can use a marker or a sharpie or a ballpoint pen. You can use crayons. All you need is something to write with and a piece of paper and you are set and ready to go. Thanks for hanging out with me. Next time I think we're going to talk about shape and then some color and texture. We have so much to talk about with art. I'm glad you were joining me today and I will see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.